What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today, we're going to be getting into some more Atun Shea films. Uh, this is Ancient Aryans, the history of crackpot Nazi archaeology. I don't know why I failed to pronounce that. As a big dinosaur guy, I know all about archaeology and paleontology and things like that. I don't know why I couldn't pronounce that. Maybe just seeing it spelled kind of screwed me up, but... Anyway, I know you guys have, uh, are big fans of Atun Shay. Um, I'm a big fan of Atun Shay. I like watching their videos. Normally, I like to try to give some space uh, before I react to another video. But from now on, I'm going to just react to stuff that I like regardless of the time. Now, when something first gets uploaded, I'm probably not going to react to it immediately because I like to give the original content creator some time to uh, you know, benefit from the whole algorithm. You know, the, the, the new movie, uh, the new video drop, usually that's when they get their most views and things like that. So I like to give them time to collect that before I do a reaction as if my video is going to somehow take from theirs. So I, I doubt, I, I'm pretty sure I'll probably get like a fraction of their, <laughs> their viewers, but whatever. I like to do my part anyway. You never know. I might blow up. Shut up. You'll know. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this, see what it has to offer. Um, I will have a link for a Toon Shades video at the end of this video. Um, it'll be a link that pops up right around here. You can click on it. It'll take you to uh, his channel. You can watch his video, subscribe, like, all the other good stuff. And it will have a link for the original video in the description box down below in case you want to uh, react to the video yourself if you're a reactor or if you want to watch it without me talking over it uh, or possibly pausing. Or, you know, if you're a good person and you want to watch the original before you watch the reaction, that is the link that you will use. Now, with that being said, let's jump into this. The person to appear. Oh. Eva, it is I, your beloved Fiora, and I was thinking about your suggestion. He's on cocaine. I, I know it. Being in a big Jordan stud to cuckold me, and I think that it's something that I could get into. Is this towards the oh. end of the war? Heil. The wind mit Wiesentag. Good. Mein Gebesser sein. He actually speaks German? Ja, ist tot. Und der Rote Armee gas Hafen nach Buchtenacker. Nein, was leid. Der Raffen der Kommunisten was starb in der Peichen ab mich hat weisheit. Raffen, you haven't killed yourself. Ist on der Kriegsverbrechen reden alles. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Just take a cyanide pill. That's it, was it, Danny? Das. Ich bin das Leib für so dein Nazi sein. Der Krieg ist weit. Archaeology. Get or get <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, he's drinking it straight out of a coffee pot. Damn. D and D potion bottle. Archaeology is the search for fact, not truth. If it's truth you're interested in, there are plenty of YouTube channels that teach philosophy. But what does an archaeologist do when the person writing their checks is only interested in... That's actually a really good way of putting it. Archaeology looks for fact, and philosophers look for truth. Like that, that, that's, I never thought about that. That's good. That's real good. Um, 
because the whole thing about truth is like depending on how deep into the whole archaeology or not archaeology the whole philosophical thing you want to get you can talk about like how truth is vague or there is no truth or there's so many different things you can do with truth in the philosophical sense so yeah because like I've, I've always thought about it like truth is just what it is it's but then when i like now that he said that i'm thinking and this whole time i've already been thinking about fact because truth is a lot tougher to find it's not just something that's just there that, that i like that <laughs> searching for us i'm gonna go back a bit kind of fact let's engage in a thought Our computer's game. acting slow but what does an archaeologist do when the person writing their checks is only interested in searching for a certain kind of fact. Let's engage in a thought experiment for a second. Let's say that you are an archaeologist during a time when there's renewed public interest in your research. New university chairs are getting endowed by the score. New museums are being opened, and old ones are getting more funding. Archaeological sites are transforming into beautiful open-air tourist attractions for anyone to enjoy. Multiple documentaries are getting produced to raise awareness about important local history. All you have to do, Mr. or Mrs. Archaeologist, to take part in all of this, this history buff's dream, is to sell your soul to the devil. Well, you've probably already guessed by now that this is exactly the conundrum that the German archaeological community found themselves in during the regime of Adolf Hitler. Hitler was the best thing that happened to prehistoric European archaeology. But, and it may shock you to hear this, he didn't do it out of the goodness of his heart. Believe it or not, Adolf Hitler had something to prove. Pretty much. All sorts of seemingly respectable people set out to help Hitler substantiate that claim. Doctors, lawyers, historians, religious leaders, but one of Hitler's stooges took it a step further. Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer of the SS. Mm. Himmler thought the best way to prove the Aryan race's superiority was to look to the distant past. I don't get how, uh, maybe this is just me being like cynical or pessimistic or whatever, but it's like, I don't know, my faith in humanity drops each and every time I hear stories about this. Like, how is it that you can be convinced to like go against what you know is is fact or true just to appeal to like an agenda like you know what you're saying is wrong but you just go with it because you want it to be the truth like i don't get that like it's the same stuff that's happening nowadays with people that's just like making up their own reality and like you can see something that's 100 percent factual but then just think like oh well no that's that's fake or that because of the the source that's saying it or where, the source i'm getting it from i'm going to automatically say that's false i ain't gonna worry about it or like it could be anything like even like whether in the left side or whether you're on the right side like i've seen like discussions on the internet about this like somebody would say something but then someone else would produce a source that is like a legitimate source and it would disprove what they said but then they'll just like abandon that discussion and go somewhere else and say the same thing that they were saying before and it's like but you were already proven wrong you already were shown that that is wrong why are you still going around pushing that like i just don't get it like oh man it, it just makes me lose faith in humanity. <laughs> like, somebody just gave you facts, but it's like, because it's not what you want, you just left and went somewhere else and continued to spew the bullshit you were spewing before that fact was given to you. The best way to prove the Aryan race's superiority was to look to the distant past. He believed that every good idea humanity had ever come up with originated with a racially pure, prehistoric German civilization that the cultures of Greece, Rome, Egypt, Carthage, and Mesopotamia were civilized by waves of Germanic immigration, <laughs> giving mommy. rise to such wonderful things as writing, pyramids, aqueducts, and man-boy love. <laughs> that guy go further east to uh, get the whole thing about writing and everything, right? Well, not really. I'm thinking about paper. <laughs> So the Nazis poured a fortune into archaeological research, and for the most part, German academics took their blood money. 
Some were diehard Nazis who were only too happy to help. Others, who refused to tow the party line, retired early and were replaced by loyal men. But the majority, they were simply too meek to speak out. They just took the Nazi money and taught what they were told to teach in the universities. Pretty soon, Nazi biases started getting confirmed. Himmler decided to form a secret society called the Anen Er N <laughs> called the Ananerba. Anan meaning forefather. It's 2020. We need, or it's 2021. We need to give teachers better ways of um, getting their information through. And I'm not talking about just like computers, because that's. I'm talking about in classrooms and stuff. Why don't we have digital blackboards and stuff that, you know, teachers can like write with their finger, and we need we need to invest in schools. Ananerba, called the Ananerba. Anan meaning forefathers, Erba meaning heritage. This is their logo, which is way cooler than it has any right to be. They even had club rings with the logo on them. I hate how much I like these rings. God damn it, Nazis. Why are you so fashionable, you evil fucking bastards? So Himmler sent these archaeologists to historic sites all around the world, and they returned with some... Is that Nazis or is that Norse? Conclusions. As you probably know, a key tenet of Nazi ideology was to provide Lebensraum, or living space for the German people. It's essentially why the Wehrmacht decided to conquer Europe. So conveniently, Himmler's archaeologists found ancient Germanic artifacts in places like Poland, France, and Czechoslovakia. Say what you will about the Nazis, but they weren't in the habit of smelling their own farts. That is to say, they were shameless liars, and they knew it. Except for the whole thing about the Jewish conspiracy to take over the world. Uh, they were very sincere about that. They really, really hated the Jews. For some reason, people in the comment sections of my videos often assume that I'm Jewish. No idea why. Most Nazis <laughs> I'm glad he said that. I've already told you guys in the past, people that I've had in my videos, reacting to his videos, talking about, like, oh, well, he's Jewish. So it's like, where the fuck... <laughs> Like, okay, where the hell did that come from, first of all? Second of all, okay, the the people that say this tend to be white nationalists or white nationalist sympathizers for sure, based on their names and their pictures and stuff, but that's just how it is. But before I go ahead and jump into that, let me go ahead and say this real quick. And I know that I don't mean to be down talking to everybody. This is just the people that this affects, okay? So if you're not one of these people, then, you know, feel free to, you know, do your thing. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. If you're going to get on my channel and spew some bullshit, and when I say bullshit, I'm talking about the people that go on my channel and talk about how the Nazis had Jewish soldiers, so therefore something, or, well, the Confederates, they had black people fighting for them, therefore, da -da. just know in the future you will, you will be completely banned. I did have a discussion with one person that tried to spew this bullshit and... I left the thread up. I didn't ban them because it would get rid of their comments. So I left the comments up because I wanted people to look at it and see how stupid the argument is. I, I argue. I mean, I argued back with them, of course, but I wanted to leave it up. That's the problem with the whole YouTube banning thing. Like when you ban someone, all their comments disappear from your channel. Whereas I would like to keep some of their older comments, just keep people from doing new comments. Um, but yeah, if you get on my channel trying to spew some bullcrap about that or about how the South wasn't fought for slavery or anything that's demonstrably false and you're trying to push a narrative, I will ban you. <laughs> that's just a heads up. I've, 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 I've tried doing the middle ground thing and it's like, no, I'm, I'm tired of it. Because you're not arguing with people that are having sincere discussions. These are people trying to push narratives and trying to... Uh, fit an agenda, and I'm not playing with that anymore. That I'm Jewish. No idea why. Most high-ranking Nazis thought that Himmler's quest for ancient artifacts was a little ridiculous. Sure, they appreciated the value of archaeology as a propaganda tool, but they didn't really think Himmler was going to find Atlantis or the Holy Grail. But Himmler did. Big time. He became obsessed with discovering as much about this prehistoric Aryan civilization as he possibly could this imaginary civilization, mind you. 
He wanted to learn about its religion, its language, its culture, and apply it to modern day Europe. The funny thing is, aren't Aryans like Middle Eastern? I could have sworn Aryans are from like the Middle East. So technically, they wouldn't even be blonde haired, blue eyed, right? They'd be, they'd look Middle Eastern. So it's like, talk about whitewashing history. His eventual goal was to replace Christianity with a completely twisted version of Germanic paganism. Even the Fuhrer thought this was stupid. Albert Speer, the Nazi architect, claimed Hitler once told him, This dude speaks very well for this reenactment. This is a good actor. In 1945, Hitler killed himself. That was that then. <laughs> and lots of other Nazis died. It was a good year. But for every Nazi who faced justice, a hundred more melted back into the German population. Uh, and thousands of Mietlaufe, or fence sitters, people who knew Nazi crimes were happening but just decided to turn a blind eye, they remained in Germany and continued with their lives and careers, including the archaeologists and academics who had benefited directly from Nazi funding and public interest. And for the rest of the 20th century, many senior archaeologists in Germany were men whose careers had been made by the Nazi regime. Even today, if you go to the website of the German Archaeological Institute and click on the History tab, you'll just find a bland list of the directors of the Institute and a graphic telling you when the various research facilities were built. No mention at all of the Nazi years. None of these archaeologists actually took part in the atrocities of the Holocaust. But what they did do was feed the propaganda machine that got millions of people on board with an ideology that championed genocide as the only solution to the world's problems. And like the Nazi scientists who went on to work on the American space program, most of these senior archaeologists never had to face the consequences of their actions. Exactly. Um... This goes into something that ties into the, the little uh, advisory I said earlier about people getting on my channel spewing bullshit. One of the things that I was, that the, the person I was arguing with did mention that I do agree with is that both sides are not clean. When it comes to the allies and things like that, they committed their set of atrocities as well and they did things that they didn't give a damn about the good or bad, the moral aspect of it, whereas they cared more about helping themselves. That's the reason why they went and handpicked different Nazis to come and uh, join them, what was it, Operation Paperclip, and had them like working on their space programs and their science divisions and things like that. And these Nazis never faced a single day of any of the atrocities they ever committed against anybody all because they helped out, you know, America or the UK or Soviet Union or whoever the hell else, that it shows that the, the allies, too, were committing their thing. So I don't have a problem with someone saying that the allies or the union or whatever else weren't uh, perfect. Like, that, that, I have no problem with that. You can, you can bring out the things that they actually did. But when you start trying to push up the Nazis and the Confederates as if they were some type of noble people that, you know, weren't really that bad. No, I don't, I don't play that shit. But, um, yeah, when it comes to allies and I usually always speak about us because that's where I'm from. So I know the most about it. Like we have a ton of things in our history that are just flat out dark. Almost every president since, I would say almost every modern president, except for maybe Jimmy Carter, are war criminals. Like, almost every one of them are. Um, they've uh, gone in and committed coups against, or they orchestrated coups against democratically elected leaders of countries and and installed puppets and uh, people that would be that would do America's best interest, even if these people were dictators. Um, 
like right now America talks about how bad Islamic extremists and all this other stuff is, but we're the ones that put them in power because they were fighting against communists at the time or whatever else. Like most of the people that we're fighting against nowadays are people that have CIA training. <laughs> like that's just, that's just how it is. But okay. It's it just goes into losing faith in humanity. Damn, I don't know why I brought that up. It makes me feel worse. Instead, they prospered. You know the funny thing? I'm willing to guarantee you that there were Nazis that were brought into America that worked on those programs that were treated better by the government and by just America in general than a lot of like minority soldiers that fought against those Nazis and gave their lives for them. I'm willing to guarantee at that time that was the case. I promise you, I I want to. I haven't looked at any examples personally, like because it's just popped up in my head. But I'm willing to guarantee, if I look it up, there are Nazis that were treated way better than uh, soldiers that were minorities coming back from that very war where they fought the Nazis. And I will come quietly. I am ready. <laughs> Dear Mr. Soviet, uh, sooner rather than later, I hope. <laughs> so a bunch of Nazis mm -hmm. got away with it. So what? Is there a point to this lecture? Well, yeah, there is. And once again, it's this. Facts are in pretty short supply these days. Is it possible the ancients built their pyramids to tap into the same electromagnetic fields as extraterrestrials use to power their crafts? So how many people do you think were brought over from Africa on slave ships? Because that definitely I, happened. Uh, I don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? I don't believe that story. That's the date of the foundation. What the hell? Country. It's very set, very clear, absolutely founded, exactly the date that Plato gives for the ending of Atlantis. Every person has to be ready to look oh, at him. these ancient texts and ancient monuments from our perspective. Now, listen, I'm not... I almost want to believe him because it looks like he looked into the Ark of the Covenant. Like, I, I, I kind of want to. These ancient texts and ancient <laughs> monuments from our perspective. Now, listen. I'm not trying to compare Giorgio Tsoukalos to Heinrich Himmler. The people on those clips were not Nazis, not even close, and their ideas aren't nearly as dangerous. But conspiracy theories about ancient civilizations have not been around forever. They largely came about in the 19th century with the rise of scientific racism. As colonial treasure hunting slowly morphed into modern day archeology, span European adventurers sought to explain monumental ancient structures that were built in countries that these Europeans considered primitive. They reasoned that only white men were robust, intelligent, and civilized enough to build such wonders, and they skewed the evidence to fit their theories. This was famously part of the origin of Mormonism. Joseph Smith thought that the Native American mounds near his house in upstate New York couldn't possibly have been built by natives, and instead were built by Hebrews who had come to America in biblical times. In many ways, Nazi eugenics were the culmination of centuries of theories about scientific racism. And while that theory largely died with Hitler, it's never been easier to be taken in by comforting fictions with absolutely no basis in evidence. Not too much of a stretch to go from ancient Aryans 
to ancient aliens. People truly believe that the technology to build pyramids wasn't of this earth because at the time the pyramids were being made. So it was Europeans coming to Africa, seeing an amazing civilization that they could not imagine an African build, and they must then invoke some other cause uh -huh. that enabled them to build it. Excuse me, uh, you know. <laughs> and historically, academics have not been immune to this. It's healthy to be open-minded and doubt what the experts are telling you. Considering the crackpot theories reputable German archaeologists believed just 70 years ago, it's safe to say that in a hundred or a thousand years, people will be laughing at all of our crackpot theories. But beware of the man with the stake in the outcome. If somebody's built their whole career trying to prove that aliens built the pyramids, then they may be unable or unwilling to consider the merits of contrary evidence. First of all, we should just say, for people who don't know, True. you have been at the front of the line um, for decades talking about these lost civilizations <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you exposed me to a lot of these what were at the time controversial ideas that have now been substantiated. Yeah, yeah, well, as early as 1933, I proposed that civilization originated with a genetically pure Aryan super race. Since then, Zafir has sent out legions of his most loyal archaeologists to find evidence to substantiate the claim. Is there any effort underway to try to uncover more evidence? Oh, Reichsführer Himmler has insisted upon it. You know, <laughs> he is a great guy, that Himmler. He recently invited me to Wevelsburg, his creepy castle in the mountains. What do you got, Jamie? Inducted me into his secret club, gave us all these rings. <laughs> Aren't they snappy? What do you got, <laughs> Jamie? Yeah, we did weird sex things and pagan rituals well into the night. It was a great time. Traditional academics mm. and traditional historians that are trying to, I guess it's archaeologists, that were trying to resist, they've let go a lot of oh, that. Yeah, they ensured their compliance. <laughs> yeah. I had a, a thought this once. This one he asked him about DMT influence. or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> yeah. That was perfect. Now, before I get into it, let me go ahead and say, I love Atun Shay's videos. I love when he does his characters and stuff because of how deep he gets into them. Like, when you look at him playing the the Civil War uh, characters and when you see him playing the the Nazi characters and everything, like, he gets so deep into them. I mean, I know he was a reenactor in his past, so it's like, that was kind of his job, but... I mean, he's probably one of the most premier ones. I don't know how, how deep the reenactment scene is, but I'm pretty sure if he were to promote it and, like, focus on it, he probably could cause a bit of a boom when it comes to interest in reenactments again. Um, but, yeah, like, when you look at history and the world and things like that, when you talk about influences one of the probably the worst thing that's ever happened to this world was colonialism because i i could be very wrong about this but it's just what i've it's kind of what i like when i just thinking about it what i what i point to the origins of like racism and I mean, i'm sure racism was i think before that too but i guess you could say modern racism um when you talk about uh all these, not just countries, but damn near continents of people that have been uh, downtrodden and taken advantage of and uh, stuck in poverty and things like that stems from colonialism and people coming in, taking over those areas and like outsourcing the resources without investing anything else in return. And it's like there are tons of places in the world that just have been crippled by just just by that what's the word I'm looking for policy that ideal of you know you being better than the people from this country or you by trying to inject your 
culture or whatever into this country not for not by genuine means but by trying to weed out their culture or by trying to expand your culture to the point where you want everyone to be you it's led to dark and bad things um to this very day like the reason why a lot of these conspiracy theories and things like that can carry on is because relics of the past don't want to give that up like there are people that fight tooth and nail to preserve these old ways of thinking even though all the evidence around them should show that it's bullshit they were able to get away with it in the past because the world was never as connected as it is now. Like, just think, within the last hundred years or so, humanity has been connected more than it's ever been in history. Like, in the past, it's like the only people that really had a chance to like go and see the entire rest of the world were people that were like explorers, people that went out and actually did it. And usually those people were under the influence of kings or leaders or whatever that wanted to push a certain narrative so they could go to an area come back and say oh well those people over there are just savages or well those people over there are uneducated or they don't have any intelligence or uh, you can they can push that shit but now it's like it doesn't work for those of you that have their eyes open because it's like well you can tell me they're unintelligent but I can, I'm looking at them and I can see them and I see what they're talking about and I see what they're doing I see what they're fighting for it, that's not true I know, like you can't tell me that these people uh, aren't uh, ingenuitive because I see the, the things they're building and I see the, the the culture that they have and the efforts that they're doing like I can talk to them like, I can actually like send a message right now and, and talk to somebody from that country Whereas in the past, it's like, if you were able to talk to them, it would take year or not years, but it would take months to get something and receive it. And most people probably wouldn't even be bothered to make that type of effort. So you just never got in contact with that side. Hell, the reason why racism in America was able to, to flourish for as long as it has is because for so long we were separated. Like we a black person didn't reach out to a white person the white person didn't reach out to a black person so it was easy to be like oh those people are like this or like that and they do this they don't do this and da, da, da. but it wasn't until like we integrated that it's like oh damn you're just like me <laughs> like i like, i i don't know like me i always think of like small stuff i always think of small stuff that connects me with somebody else and that's one of the reasons why i've always like told people like i don't see how someone can like kill somebody or or can do something like really bad against someone because me maybe it's just me thinking too much or whatever but it's like i see all the small stuff like i think like that person like i, I got this problem this guy but when you think about it we probably had the same upbringing like i was in the pokemon they were probably in the pokemon too like who knows when we were kids we probably could have been friends <laughs> like I like basketball. They play basketball. I'm a Jordan fan. Oh shit, they're a Jordan fan. Like they got the same shoes that I got. Like I remember being up, you know, before the store opened, camping out and they got the same story. They did the same thing and uh, oh, they were they liked the Fern Gully the movie or whatever. And I like Fern Gully the movie. Nobody around me liked it. Oh shit, they liked it. Like just small stuff like that just, that just has me thinking. Like that's the reason why I like, could never do anything like that cuz like what is this person's life story? Like how like you don't know how connected they might be to you or even if they're not just all the things that makes them them. And for you to like stamp out that life or to, to to stop that entire story at that very moment because of a disagreement you have or some petty bullshit that doesn't make any sense and it's like how much more could this person have done how much what kind of story this person could have had like I just see it's like a book and it's like you just ended the chapter right then and there and they got this entire past this entire story all the 
the interactions they've had with their family and their friends and coworkers and schoolmates and uh, like sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, like all the promises and the things that they like and dislike and the things that they've done with other people and the promises they made in the future to do other stuff with people. And like, you just ended all that. Uh, like it's like, we just need to get connected more. We just have to get connected. Most of the people that I think tends to spew crap about, you know, racism and all the other stuff tend to be people that either have not sat down and like been around these people or the people they have a problem with, or they've intentionally like separated themselves and have convinced themselves that these other people are this different thing and they would realize they're wrong if they actually just sat down and talked to them. Like hell, even Hitler himself, people have talked about how he had this uh, Jewish doctor that took care of his mom and he uh, had this like honorary thing for the doctor where the uh, doctor was considered like a, a legitimate Nazi and nobody was to mess with him even though he was Jewish. It's like, okay, that's the thing. You've gotten, you got to know this person and it, it changed. It, it completely goes against your entire mindset and your ideal of this and that. But because you're so brainwashed, you don't take the time to get in contact with other people and get to know their stories and stuff like that. But whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and share. I look forward to seeing you guys in the future uh, episodes. Uh, I love watching a tune Shay. Like I said, I'll be uh, checking out more videos in the future. Um, let me know what you all think. Uh, I will be pushing the YouTube video request thread over to Patreon because the last one that I put on YouTube was kind of a shit show. <laughs> I asked for requests for YouTube videos and I very specifically said no TV shows, but like three-fourths of the entire thread is people posting TV shows. So it's like, okay, I'm going to have to move it somewhere else. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll have a post like that on Patreon up soon. If you're interested in checking that out, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Uh, it'll pop up there. But anyway, I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully you've been enlightened. I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. I'm going to give you the deuces, and I'm signing out. Deuces. <laughs>